So why shoot handheld? Because it's a fast, affordable, flexible, unobtrusive, and if you practice, easy way of shooting some nice video. This is my 6400, no sensor stabilization, Sigma 16mm, Sigma 30mm, no optical stabilization, and Sony 10 to 18, with which I won't use optical steady shot for this video. So all the footage you will see was shot with a completely unstabilized system. Now there are lots of tricks when it comes to shooting smooth footage, like sliding the camera over a flat surface using some kind of smooth fabric, putting socks on your Joby Gorilla Pod, or using a skateboard, rollerblades, and so on. However, this tutorial will focus on what to do when you're out and about using minimal to no additional equipment at all. So here's the basics. Number one, know your shot before you do it. Where does it begin? Where does it go? Where does it end? Decide on the composition beforehand. You will have more control and your movements will be more precise. You can turn on the marker display if you have an aspect ratio in mind. Second main menu, third sub menu, third option, marker display, turn it on. Fourth option, marker settings, second sub option, aspect, choose the ratio you're going for. Alternatively, you can use a grid line to help you with your composition. Second main menu, sixth sub menu, fifth option, grid line. I think for video, the rule of thirds grid is the best choice. Number two, use the highest frame rate at your service. In case of the 6400, that is 120 frames per second at full HD resolution. If your camera taps out at 60 frames per second, that is what you should choose, for this purpose at least. The general idea, of course, is to play the high frame rate footage back at 24 frames per second inside your editing software to get slow motion. This will help you out a lot in getting smooth footage. Second main menu, first submenu, third option, file format, XAVCS HD. Then record settings, choose 120p 100m. Number three, decide on the composition you want and then frame just a little wider than that. Because for all shots, we will use digital stabilization in post-production. And this technique usually crops into the image a little. Sometimes it will crop in a lot if the original footage is really, really shaky. Then again, at the end of this video, that won't be any concern of yours. You will be fine framing just a little wider than what you actually want. Number four, we will stabilize the footage using DaVinci Resolve. In my experience, it does as well as the Warp Stabilizer in Adobe Premiere. But Resolve, at least as of now, is completely free. So that's a no-brainer, really. That wraps up the basics. Now let's do some shots. We will start with moving but non-walking shots and then progress to walking shots. For each of the shots, I will show you how they are set up exactly and of course the results in both 60 frames per second slow motion and 120 frames per second slow motion, along with some tips and tricks here and there, of course. So let's do it. First shot, a classic, the fixed focus push-in. There's many ways to do this with slight variations in the end results. So here are the most commonly used techniques. Option one, completely handheld. Prepare to do this for a couple of minutes, so in the end you have a lot of shots to choose from. Also, it's a fixed focus shot, so we're gonna reverse the movement. We're gonna start with the subject in focus and then pull away from it. Because it's highly improbable that you're gonna hit focus perfectly moving in on the subject. It's much easier to start with the subject in focus, pull away from it, and later reverse the movement in post-production. Here's how you do this. Right-click your clip, go to Change Clip Speed, and check the box for Reverse Speed. So this is what it looks like, the range that I want to use in reverse. It's a pretty short range because I'm now going to slow down the footage so it'll take much longer to play back. Now I'm going to place the clip in an empty spot on the timeline, duplicate it four times because I want to use one of the clips and extend it to five times its length, playing it back at 20%. Therefore, I right click, go to change clip speed and instead of it playing back at 100%, I want it to play back at 20%, which is one fifth original speed hence a five times slow motion. Now I'm gonna extend it to five times its original length. I get rid of the ones that I don't need. I usually keep the original clip. Now everything that's in this original clip 
is also in the clip above, but played back at one fifth of the speed, five times slow motion, which is exactly what we want. So far, looks pretty good, the range is right, the speed is right, but it's still a little shaky. So let's use digital stabilization. I put the clip back where it belongs, go to the color workspace, select the tracker window, and from the drop-down menu, select stabilizer. Now there's different algorithms to choose from. For this fixed focus push-in, in in my experience, similarity works the best. For the cropping ratio, I select 0.25. The lower the cropping ratio, the more the software is allowed to crop into the image. A little counterintuitive, but that is the way it works. Smoothing, I set to 1, which is way too high usually, but for this particular shot, with this algorithm, it works perfectly. Then I let Resolve do its thing, and usually that's it, so let's check out the end result. Looks pretty good, the tiniest bits of shake are still noticeable, but considering this is a completely unstabilized system and a completely handheld shot, the results are pretty damn good. Another way to do this is to use a camera strap to help you with the movement. For what I do, I swear by the peak design solution, because it allows me to quickly put the strap on and take it off. But basically, you can use the cheapest camera strap available to you, or simply the one that came with the camera. The procedure is exactly the same, start with the subject in focus, and then pull away from it. Here's the original shot. This is the range I want to use. This is the range in reverse. Here's five times slow motion. Five times slow motion using the same digital stabilization as before. And two times slow motion stabilized. Here's another way to use the camera strap. With this one, just make sure that the ground is rather soft than hard because this really hurt my knee. End result reversed. 5 times slow motion, stabilized. Looks pretty good. Another variation with a noticeably different end result, mini monopod and tabletop tripod. Checking out the end result, two things. Number one, we're not moving in on the subject on a straight line, but on a curve. Visually very interesting and I actually like that a lot. Also, the additional equipment makes the movement very smooth. This is why for this shot, we can turn the setting for smoothness all the way down to 0.25. Mini ball head, quarter inch male on top, quarter inch female on the bottom. Quarter inch male on top of the monopod, quarter inch female on its bottom. Monopod attaches to the mini ball head. Mini tabletop tripod, two different settings for height. This one will attach to the bottom of the monopod. And there you go, all that's left to do is attach the whole contraption to the camera. Lesser known option, using a rubber band. This way you're gonna introduce a speed ramp in the end result, because the beginning will be faster and the end will be a little slower. Here's the end result, fast in the beginning and then slowing down. Once more, just to get a good look, pretty cool effect. And 60 frames per second, two times slow motion. So let's move on to the next shot. The good old tilt pan reveal. This works for a lot of shots, but in my experience it works particularly well for establishing shots, like establishing this little square with the adjacent building. This is the original shot, handheld, nothing done to it except the color grade. Two important tips, this is number one, the movement is all legs and torso, no arms, no wrists. Pay close attention, shoulders, elbows, wrists, don't move at all. It's all legs and torso. Tip number two, breathing technique. Before you do the shot, breathe in, hold your breath for a moment, start to breathe out for like half a second, and into breathing out, start the movement. Don't start the movement right when you start to breathe out. Breathe out a little first and then start the movement. Sounds like a weird tip, but breathing technique really helps. Also, I should probably buy a new shirt. Then here's another example of a tilt pan movement. Done almost exactly the same as before. Basically a nice shot, but also an opportunity to tell you more tips and tricks. Starting with the so-called cradle hold. 
With the a6400, it starts with flipping the screen up, firmly grab your camera and place it right at the elbow crease. Make sure to not accidentally turn the zoom ring. Then, with your free hand, hold on to your arm and tuck this elbow. This will give you a stable base to tilt and pan from. Foot position. It's important, so pay attention to it, especially when it comes to tilting and panning shots with a lot of torso involvement. If this is what your feet look like during tilting and panning with your torso, your footage most likely isn't going to be as smooth as it could be. First foot points in the direction your torso points to in the beginning of the shot, second foot points in the direction your torso points to at the end of the shot. This is a stable base to tilt and pan from. So, for the tilt pan reveal shots, use breathing technique, cradle hold if you can, and pay attention to your foot position. Shot number 3, the orbit. This is an example of a horizontal orbit. But there is also the vertical orbit, of which this is an example. We're going to take a look at the horizontal one first. Once again, the key here is no wrists, no elbows, no shoulder movement all legs and torso. Also, don't start with a completely straightened leg. Start with it slightly bent, because going from straight to bent will give you some shake. Again, breathing technique applies, and after that it's just a matter of doing enough takes, so you get one or two golden ones. End result, horizontal orbit, 60 frames per second, 2 times slow motion, 120 frames per second, 5 times slow motion. Now you could do a vertical orbit without any additional equipment, but in this particular case I highly suggest using some kind of camera strap, because with this movement wrists and shoulders are involved. Keeping tension on the camera strap and the right hand placement will massively help you in tilting the camera in a controlled way. Also, during the movement, tilt your torso back to keep roughly the same distance from your subject. I like to reverse grip the lens barrel like this and place my fingers on the top and the bottom of the camera like that. This way I can control the tilt without the strap getting in the way. Result, vertical orbit, 60 frames per second, 2 times slow motion. Still a little wobbly, so here's what I did. I simply copied my original clip, switched to the deliver workspace, exported the clip as a master H.264 clip, then imported the clip into my project, dragged it onto my timeline and simply stabilized it a second time. Of course, this costs me some resolution, so to finish this up, I added some sharpening. Now let's take a look on the left side, stabilized once, and on the right side, stabilized twice. And as you can see on the right hand side, using stabilization twice actually gives you the smoother shot. However, every time you do this, you're going to lose resolution and you're going to have to sharpen a little more. You can't do this an infinite number of times, obviously, because you're going to lose viewing angle and image quality. So, I recommend to not do this more than two times. But, technically, every time you do do it, you should get a smoother result. For me personally, two runs of stabilization, including a crop and sharpening each time, is the maximum. Especially when I'm shooting Full HD. Sometimes with 4K footage, you can do it a third time, but to be honest, in that case I'd rather go back if I can and do the shot better. Once again, 60 frames per second, end result, 2 times slow motion, stabilized twice. End result, 120 frames per second, 5 times slow motion, stabilized once. I really really like this one, it's probably the smoothest shot I got all day. Next type of shot, the foreground reveal. I did three variations, horizontal, vertical and a push-in. For any horizontal movement of that size, the more legs and torso you use, the less arms, the better. This is an autofocus shot, so we're going to talk about autofocus settings in a moment. Before we do, let's check out the vertical shot. If during a shot you simply can't help but use shoulders, elbows and or wrists, breathing technique really becomes your best friend. Other than that, to pull off a shot like this, simply apply the principles we already talked about. Shoot a high frame rate, know the shot before you do it, 
use breathing technique and then just do a couple of shots so you at least get one or two golden ones. Last variation and a nice segue into walking shots, a walking push-in reveal. Really nice shot, that's why it's in there, but to be honest I couldn't adequately stabilize it, so sometimes things just don't work out. Still, nice shot. Let's talk autofocus settings real quick, here are mine for slow motion shooting. Drive speed, normal or fast, because a slow drive speed is way too slow when using slow motion. Tracking sensibility, same thing, use responsive, because if it takes forever to actually start pulling focus, people notice and that kills the shot. Okay, so here's our first walking shot, the so-called walking push-in. I actually purposefully did some things wrong here, still, after working the clip, it actually turned out pretty damn fine. So, as you could see before, sometimes things don't work out, but other times, things work out that actually shouldn't. Nonetheless, now we're walking. Walking is usually the realm of the gimbal and the steadicam. This is when it gets really difficult with a completely unstabilized system and requires a lot of practice. So let's talk about the wrong and right way to do the infamous ninja walk. If your heels touch the ground, you're doing it wrong. Been there, done that, by the way. The heels transfer every impact almost directly to the hips and from there it's the torso, which means you're gonna get the good old up and down shake you want to avoid. You only walk on the front of your feet, for lack of a better analogy, like a ballet dancer. This way you're using three joints, hip, knee and ankle, and those three will buffer your steps way better than only two could. And this will significantly reduce shake from putting your feet on the ground while walking. Often overlooked, but very important, do not keep your feet apart like this. Instead, walk on a single straight line. This will really help in reducing left and right movement. And now here's the single most important tip, at least in my mind, I basically never hear anyone talk about. We all have a tendency to tilt our torsos forward while doing the ninja walk, but this very posture can seriously F up your back over the long run. Tilting at the hip is gonna kill your lower back. Shoving your head forward while tilting upwards is gonna kill your neck. And extending your arms like this is gonna kill your mid back. So although it looks a bit more stupid, an upright position is certainly more healthy. An hour of this and you're about ready to call it quits for the day. An hour of this, much less painful. Also, wear shoes with thick, soft and flexible soles. Not kidding, it helps. So here's the result of a wrong ninja walk. This is the right ninja walk. And this is the end result, 120 frames per second, 5 times slow motion, 1 run of digital stabilization. Pretty good results considering walking in a straight line without panning or tilting is the toughest shot you can do shooting handheld. Now before I wrap up this video completely, here's an example of a shot that at first glance looks pretty much impossible to stabilize. Then again, if you have a shot like this, where spatial relations and space in general is kind of obscured, in this case by all the plants and trees, this is when the perspective algorithm of the stabilizer really shines. And as you can see, the results are amazing. This doesn't work with architecture or anything that shows the wobble that usually comes with the stabilization process of perspective, but in this case, it's a bullseye and it's not even slow motion. So whenever you have a shot that looks terrible at first glance, but you realize that it doesn't show any geometry or if so, only in a very obscured way, definitely give the perspective algorithm of the stabilizer a try. You can set the cropping ratio to 0.25 and the smoothness all the way up to 1. And maybe you're in for an incredible surprise. Okay, so these were the shots, tips and tricks. And I really hope they will help you the next time you want to shoot some nice handheld footage yourself. So, to finish the video, I saved up the most important tip for the end. Practice, practice, practice. And then, practice some more. And before you know it, it'll be second nature to you. So, if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. All the tech that I've used in this video is linked in the description. As always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.